Welcome to this video. In this video, I wanna make sure that you wait till the end of this video because I'm gonna give you a very special tip to how you can create your online business and continue with your niche blogging and all of that, but how is it that you're gonna be staying relevant through all this Google crap? I will just say, I will just be very honest of what's going on with Google. So we have had so many clients and I work with so many bloggers. I'm a blogger myself. Some of my sites just sailed right through and I'm gonna give you those tips right now. But my, some of my sites just did not not get hit by the HCO, HCU updates at all or the spam updates or the old domain, you know, expired domain updates, all of these things because I don't buy expired domains and I've never ever told any of my clients to buy expired domains. So now I sell expired domains, but I don't buy them for my websites. And I'm so glad we don't because Google is going through and trying to find those. And if they think you're doing any kind of backlink programs or anything with them, any, you know, v any private blogging networks and things like that, they're just going to shut you down and de-index you. The stuff that Google has been doing to bloggers, I cannot even begin to say how unethical and I don't even know the words for it. It is so bad and they are stealing our content. So what they wanted to do for years and years, they have told us bloggers to continue to blog with our experience. They talked about EAT. Remember, I have lots of videos on EAT, E-E-A-T. They told us to make sure that we are quality authorities, that we establish our authority on our websites, that we give real life experiences. So if you're a travel blogger, they want you to actually travel to the places that you're writing about, then write about them. If you're a mommy blogger, they want you to give your experiences of raising your children and changing the diapers and feeding your babies and all of this stuff. And they want this firsthand experience. If you are a reviewer, let's say you're an affiliate marketer and you sell products and make a commission, an Amazon commission from it or from the company, they want you to actually buy the product and use it and then share with everybody the results of that. Unfortunately, what it looks like they've been actually doing is lying to us. And what it looks like they've been doing is stealing our content. Not only that, they're stealing our original photos. Now, I take all my original photos. I either go outside and go to the places that I'm blogging about or the homes I'm blogging about or my home or my life. I take original photos. They are copyrighted by me. And then I also do my own AI art that I create. Now, what Google is doing is as they are building their SGE and launching that and um, the now their AI and Gemini as well is taking all of the content that you wrote that they were begging you to write for years so that you could have, they could have search results that were quality. Now what they're doing is taking that content that you wrote, giving it as answers with no link backs to your websites and stealing even your photos and using your photos to show in the SERPs when people are searching for things and not giving you the credit. This is beyond, I, I'm saying this is beyond, I don't even know what the word is. I, I can't even express, you know, the frustration and the betrayal that we are seeing. Number two, they have this absolute love affair with Reddit, obviously. As you can tell, when you log in and you do a search, you're going to get Reddit and Quora, Forbes and Wall Street Journal and all of these kinds of results that are just not anything to do with answering your question. The problem with the Reddit results a lot is uh, it's so opinionated. It's a forum. It's where people talk and Google loves that user-generated content, but that doesn't mean it's going to answer your question. If I ask a question and I'm looking for facts, Reddit's not gonna give me facts. They're gonna give me people's experiences, which are subject, subjective, they're not objective. So it doesn't work, it doesn't answer my question. There have been times where I've asked questions in the last few weeks where I've had to go deep all the way into page 12, 13, 14 on the SERPs to get a real blog that really answers my question because they've gotten rid of all those blogs. They've de-indexed a lot of them or they've pushed them down to page 12 and whatever. That's the next thing that's been the biggest problem that I've seen. 
I am really hoping that they take a step back from this. I don't know that they will because the other thing that Google has done is placed a ton more ads on the, the top of the SERPs. And remember the day, I don't know if you remember, but I've been in SEO since 2006. And back in the day when Google was doing their first AdWords, they said that when you had an ad on page one, that they would put it above the, the um, organic search results and that those would be very clear that they were ads and you could tell that it was ad. Well, go there now and you'll see a little black letters that said sponsored now. You cannot hardly tell. They're making their ads look like they're part of somebody's blog, which they're not. That's the other thing that I've seen that they're going against their very vision that they began Google with. There are so many emails being brought to light about the the clash between the SEO department of, uh, of Google and then their ad department. So their ad revenue, obviously that's how they make their money, but you can't do that by lying and fudging your numbers and doing what they did in their last quarterly meeting, pretending that the search, that people are staying on search longer. The only reason people are staying on search longer is because we can't find the answers to the questions that we're asking. We can't find the data that we're looking for. We can't find the facts that we're looking for because of all of these um, websites that they're putting up above us bloggers and above people's true experiences and putting in paywall even. So when you have Forbes and Wall Street Journal and I think it's New York Times even, all of those websites they have a paywall, which that means is you might be able to read one or two articles for free and then you have to pay, but a lot of them you have to pay right away. So one of the SERPs that came up for me was from when I was doing a search on something, it was the Economist. Economist. So that website came up, it's a magazine, right? That used to be offline. That magazine came up and I couldn't even read the article because it forces you to open an account and pay. Well, that's against Google's terms of service. So why are they allowing these big companies to do that? But you as a blogger, you cannot have, or you running Google ads yourself, you cannot have your website do a pop-up right away with a gate that says you have to give their email address in order for them to read your content. You can't do that. So um, why is it okay for the big companies to do it? You know, so, so many people have lost their revenue, their livelihood and everything. And I know people will say, well, they should have known better. No, Google was making false promises to all these people saying that they could make their living being a blogger. And all this time, they're just now stealing the content. So what do you do about that? What is the thing that we can do about that? So the main thing I want to tell you is there's different ways to get traffic sources to your website besides Google. Well, one is DuckDuckGo, which is really up and coming. So you might want to look into that. The other is Bing, which I don't like Bing, but hey, if I have to look at the two evils, I might go with Bing for, for dominating in the SERPs. And your websites can dominate in those two sites. Now, the thing, um, so that's one of the ways, okay, is to, you never want to have all of your, you know, ducks in a row all in the same pond, right? So the other thing is, is Pinterest. Pinterest is great for getting traffic to your website, but your website has to be one that is, um, goes along with Pinterest. So let's say you're writing about taxes and how to pay your taxes. That's not really sexy. So it's really difficult. Pinterest is mostly women and it's driven by beauty and um, pin pins that are pretty. So if you can't spin your niche into something that is pretty, and attractive to women, it's not, you're not gonna get a lot of traffic to your website with Pinterest. So of course, food bloggers, travel bloggers, you guys are gonna do really do well with Pinterest going to your website, you know, linking Pinterest to your website and creating pins and stuff. And we've been, uh, we've been experimenting that with a business to B2B kind of sites and then also with my hobby sites. So I have one in the pet niche and I am testing that right now. We've been doing the test for about three months now. We're going to see, and we have been increasing some traffic, although it's not as much as it was before I before Google um, did the HSU um, update. So my pet blog was affected, but and um, my affiliate blogs were affected by this um, big sweep that Google did. However, my real estate say. My real estate niche sites did not get affected and my local service sites don't get affected. 
So those are places I recommend you to move into if you can with your business. So if you're a travel blogger, one of the things that you could do is then change, you know, um, evolve your website into maybe you are a travel agent or you are a travel guide and put together packages that people can purchase and then create a little office somewhere in your town where you can actually be a local service. So those are kinds of things that you can work on. The other thing a lot of people are doing is Facebook. I do Facebook. I've been doing it in Facebook since it started and I get a lot of business from Facebook, um, but I do a lot of networking, which is very time consuming. Um, but you can run ads on Facebook to lead those back to your website. You can create a page and a group on Facebook and get those fans to go to your website. I know some blo travel bloggers and pet bloggers are doing really well in that. Some niches don't do very well in that space. So you just kind of have to, again, experiment with it all. And I will create some more videos on specific niches that can do this and how to do it and which ones are not going to be good in doing these other uh, programs. Now, I promised you I would stay here. We're at the end here. And I promised I would give you the main the main thing for your business that you need to do if you are a blogger, and that is to create an email list. You need to have an email list. This is the secret sauce. You need to have a way to communicate with your subscribers. So it doesn't matter what Google does to you. doesn't matter what Facebook does to you. doesn't matter what Pinterest does to you. doesn't matter what X does to you. That you have a list of names of people who are following you and like what you have to offer. Give them value to this list make sure you build an email list. This is where you are going to shine in your business. This is how you can protect yourself from all of these changes happening. I hope that helps and I look forward to seeing you in the next video.